الحمد لله وصلاة وسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما برحبت في الله السلام عليكم رحمة الله وبركاته We ask that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the Almighty accepts our good and forgives our evil, protects us from kulisu and makru. And we ask that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all success and all of those who are, those who deliver knowledge, Islamic knowledge, those who translate, those who give da'wah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Habit to the line, a beautiful supplication of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And in fact, this was the first supplication that I learned, but I learned it in English. And I actually, oddly enough, learned it from the Nation of Islam because they used to say this dua. But it's really a prophetic dua of the Prophet Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, which is, Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min al-hammi wal-hazni wa'udhu bika min al-ajzi wa-kasli wa'udhu bika min jubni wa-bukhli wa'udhu bika min adab من غلبة الدين غلبة الدين وقهر الرجال. So this supplication of the Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم, O oh Allah, I seek your protection from anxiety and grief, and I seek your protection from uh, lack of strength and laziness, and I seek your protection from cowardice and and miserliness, and I seek your protection from being overcome by debt and being overpowered by men. Abu Sa'id al-Khudri radiyallahu ta'ala he narrated that one day the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam entered the masjid. He saw a man from the Ansar called Abu Usama or Abu Umama radiyallahu ta'ala and he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, what is the matter? Why are you sitting in the masjid when it is not time for prayer? He replied, never ending worries and debts. O Messenger of Allah, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam then asked, Shall I not teach you words by which when you say them, Allah will remove your worries and settle your debts? He replied, Yes, of course, O Messenger of Allah. He said, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Say in the morning and evening the above. Uh, Abu Umama radiallahu ta'ala said, then I did that, and Allah removed my worries and settled my debts. Ruahu Abu Dawood. Ahabatifillah, what a powerful uh, supplication and a powerful narration of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. This dua, it shows us how to deal with, for example, anxiety. And that is when a person experiences sadness and worries about something which will occur or may occur in the future. And we we have this kind of, the stress, it's stress related. And that is something we definitely have to combat because it can destroy your health and destroy your spiritual health. And then also the Prophet ﷺ mentioned grief, sadness. And that's when a person experiences this overwhelming sadness about something which has already occurred and it is related to the past. For example, one may experience, uh, you know, sadness over a loved one deceased, being deceased or something like this. Uh, also, in this supplication, the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentioned anxiety. And anxiety and grief can both uh, be crippling and debil de debilitating. Uh, which is why the Prophet والسلام, taught us to seek protection from it. Ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah ta'ala writes, Sadness weakens the heart and diminishes determination and wanting to go forward. There is nothing more beloved to shaitan than the sadness of a believer. And so I want to highlight this very powerful statement of Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah, uh, sorry, Shaykh al-Islam ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah ta'ala, because it shows us how sadness can cripple you. Sadness can spiritually, mentally, and then freeze you physically. How is that so? Well, if you become so sad that you're unable to really perform your duties, except that you are reflecting on what you have lost and you're crying and you're sad, it could be from a, a divorce. It could be from 
uh, the death of a family, whatever, the loss of property, all of those things can cause you great sadness. And it can destroy you and it makes the shaitan so happy because it can paralyze the believer. When a person is suffering from immense amount of grief and sadness, that leads to depression and that can freeze them and prevent them from doing good deeds, preventing from one even, even wanting to go get out of bed, even paralyze them when it comes to doing their worldly and religious duties. And that is an immensely challenging obstacle that everyone has to overcome because we always experience sadness from time to time. Also, the messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in the supplication, he mentioned inability or, you know, the to to be unable, uh, edges, to do something. So it is not restricted to just physical inability. It can also be mental or spiritual inability where a person does not have the strength to get up for salat or to fast or to part with their wealth. So we seek refuge in Allah from all forms of inability, meaning you're un, you're incapable. When it comes to spending, you are so attached to it. There is like no way you can, uh, you can spend it in good or, or in that which you need to spend. <clears throat> and that's also a type of edges. So you can be edges physically. You can be physically weak. You can be edges mentally unable to just accomplish basic things. Some people because of their sadness and because of their stress and other things. As was mentioned, there it's difficult for them to even get out of bed, to cook a meal, to eat, to make uh, food for themselves, to take care of their physical. This can happen in marriage. Someone can be so depressed that they just let themselves totally go. They just... Don't even, no longer hygiene, no longer anything is important to them. And this can be the devastation from sadness and grief and other things that strike uh, against the believer and please the shaitan. Also, in the dua is the seeking refuge in a law from laziness, a kessel, that this laziness uh, and procrastination is something that pleases the shaitan as well. And it is also crippling like an obstacle. When you find that you're really lazy, you you're, you can be lazy towards doing good deeds. You can be lazy towards doing the obligatory duties. You can become lax and lazy even in being away from uh, sinfulness and wickedness. All of this, all of these are destructive uh, means and they show the destructiveness of, of laziness and procrastination. So seeking refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from that. So that way you're able to fulfill your duties because laziness can destroy you in your financial. It can destroy you in your relationship. It can harm your uh, ability to do good deeds due to laziness and just make you so you're 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 just slow and and you're you are building or destroying yourself through procrastination also in the supplication the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam sought refuge from cowardice and cowardice also can cause harm in the same way those other uh those other um uh issues and such as anxiety and stress <clears throat> and laziness, it can also be debilitating. It can also kind of cripple you mentally and spiritually that if you're just afraid and you're afraid to stand up for the truth and you're allowing the shaitan and you're allowing for evil people and evil ideas to oppress you and slow you down, that can destroy you. <clears throat> also, uh, the Prophet Sallallahu sought refuge in being miserly you know, being stingy and greedy and that this is a great evil and it can lead you to neglect your wajib, your obligatory duties of spending on those you, you are charged an authority over and spending in zakat, the wajib that you have to spend. 
also <clears throat> very important is seeking refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from debt, as was mentioned in the hadith. And debt can also disturb you and destroy you from advancing yourself. Being crippled by debt, meaning crippled financially, financially can also prevent you from spending in the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because you're in debt. Uh, just doing some of the most, some of your basic needs and other things because you are overburdened by debt. And in, and in turn, there's a cycle of even depression and stress that comes with having debt. And that's why debt relief is such a beautiful and rewarding thing in Islam. Meaning if you help someone free themselves from debt or someone owes you something and you, you uh, release them from the debt, that there is great reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And lastly, in the supplication, the Prophet sallallahu sought refuge from being overpowered by men, meaning oppressed. And this is very important as we find so much oppression in the world. So many people who are suffering at the hands of tyranny and evil. For example, what's going on to our brothers and sisters in Philistine, Palestine. They're being slaughtered whole scale. And uh, the shayateen from amongst mankind in general are trying to humiliate them. But they still have their honor. And they still have their religion. And they're still uh, f resisting uh, and holding on to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, their Lord. Because they know it'll come to an end. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala eventually will make them uh, uh, victorious, bi'idnillah. So... These are very important um, things and attributes that we should seek refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from having these negative traits which can harm us in our religion, in our deen or dunya. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana fil akhirati hasana wa qina dhaban nar, O Allah. Grant us good in this life, as well as the hereafter, and protect us from the hellfire. Wassallallahu alaihi wasallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad.